Okay, FAQ number 19. Is the rapture part of our salvation? Okay, now as I figured it was going to happen when I came out with my study on the false god of post-trib Christians, a lot of people are now saying that I'm preaching a false gospel because I say pre-time of Jacob's trouble, rapture, belief is part of your salvation. You have to believe in that to be saved. Okay, I didn't say that. I knew these. I knew these liars. They, you know, all they hear is just lies in their eyes or in their ears. They can just they just make up stuff that I'm not even saying. You can listen to the whole thing. I never said anyone that believes in post-trib rapture, whatever you want to call that thing, post-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. Anybody that believes in that is lost. I never said that. Okay. What I simply said is those who will not be admonished anymore, those who are who are dead set in their ways, I have to question what kind of a God they worship, a God that punishes the just and the wicked at the same time. Kind of weird. That's what I was saying. But is the catching away of the bride of Christ, is this part of our salvation? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Have you trusted in Christ for your salvation? Okay. You say, well, yes, that's salvation right there. Yeah, that's part of it. Well, let's keep reading. Let's see what the other part of this thing is. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You have to hear, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You have to hear the gospel from the word of God. In whom also, after that ye believed... Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're not pre-sealed like the Calvinists teach. Okay, you're not pre-elected, chosen before the foundation of the world. Uh, that's nonsense. After you believe, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You say, then that's salvation. You get saved, God seals you with His Holy Spirit, and that's salvation. Oh, uh, no, there's a third part to it. Let's keep reading which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. The redemption of the purchased possession. Um, we're still here on the earth. Okay, We're not in heaven. When the Lord catches the bride of Christ away, the dead in Christ go up first, we which are alive and remain go up. That's the redemption of the purchased possession. And then we're safe. And you say, but I believe in the, you know, we're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, take the mark of the beast and see what happens. If you take the mark of the beast, you make God a liar. Why? Because of Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12, talk about anybody that takes the mark. If any man worship the beast, take the mark, he faces God's wrath. Which, by the way, starts at the beginning. You know when the Antichrist shows up and starts making people take the mark? So somebody says the wrath doesn't start till halfway through. They don't know what they're talking about. You take the mark, you get the wrath. You know, common sense stuff here, people. But the fact of the matter is, if you take that mark, you go to hell. But the Bible says here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. How does that work? I'll give you a hint. It doesn't. <laughs> That's why the body of Christ is leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's why, like I said in one of my other FAQs there, I said we need to abandon this thing of this pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, It is the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. If you want to make it, you know, abbreviate the last part of it there, that's a lot to say. Just say, call it the T-O-J-T-C-A, Tajtka. So we are pre-Tajtka Christians. Okay, should be easy to remember. <laughs> so, is the rapture part of our salvation? Oh, absolutely. That's the final part of it. That's the final thing there that happens. If you die right now, your body goes into the grave. You can go over and, and look at the grave site of, of D.L. Moody or some guy that died over 100 years ago, and you dig it up, you're going to find bones. Probably some old rotted clothes or whatever else there. I don't know what all, if he was embalmed or I have no idea. But the point is, you look up, a, you know, dig up a dead saint, somebody that was saved that died, their body's in the ground, okay? And us as saved Christians, our bodies are here on the earth. The redemption of the purchased possession has not fully happened. 
Now we're saved. We're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, but we have not been called up yet. And when the time of Jake, or when that rapture happens, when the catching away happens, that's the redemption of the purchased possession. So, you know, and a lot of this stuff is going to be, you know, it's, there's been so much false teaching over the years about this tribulation and rapture, tribulation stuff. There's so much false teaching that a lot of this stuff, it's just plain in Scripture. I mean, you can just see it's right there. You know, you compare Scripture with Scripture. There it is. It's obvious. But there's been so much bad teaching over the years on this issue that a lot of people just kind of, what? It sounds like heresy. You know, three parts of our salvation. There's only one way to be saved, you know. Yes, I know that, <laughs> okay? You get saved once by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. I understand that. But then the different parts of that thing, you're sealed after that you believed. And then the redemption of the purchased possession happens later. So yes, the rapture is part of our salvation. So hopefully, hopefully that answers the question there.